Okay class, before we get started on today's lesson, we're going to take a review of what we learned throughout chapter 3, and that was adding and subtracting with decimals. Okay, that was a great review of how we need to make sure we line up our decimals when adding and subtracting. And now we're going to be moving into lesson 4.1, which is dealing with algebra, multiplication patterns with decimals. And our essential question of the day is, how can patterns help you place the decimal point in a product? So let's just dive right on in into our word problem. Cindy is combining equal size rectangles from different fabric patterns to make a postage stamp quilt. Each rectangle has an area of 75 hundredths of a square inch. If she uses 1,000 rectangles to make the quilt, what will be the area of the quilt? All right, the first thing we need to do is use the pattern to find the product. Well, we know that one times 75 hundredths equals 75 hundred because our identity property says anything multiplied by one is its number. So 10 times 75 hundredths equals seven five tenths. Well, let's take a look at that. We know that we have one zero and 10. So we're going to move our decimal point one place to the right. So 10 times 7,500 then equals 7 and 5 tenths. Now if we multiply 100 times 75 hundredths, we look back at the pattern and see that there's two zeros in 100. So we're going to move our decimal place two places to the right. And that's going to equal 75. Now if we go back to the 1,000 times 75 hundredths, we see that we have one, two, three zeros in thousand, so we're going to have to move our decimal place three places to the right. But we only have two, so we know that we can add a zero to the end of 75 hundredths, and that will allow us to move our decimal place one, two, three places to the right. So 1,000 times 75 hundred equals 750. The quilt will have an area of 750 square inches. So as you multiply by increasing power of tens, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? Well to answer our question, we know the decimal point moves one place to the right as I multiply by each power of 10. So place value patterns can be used to find the product of a number and the decimals one tenths and one one hundredths. So let's look at our example. Jorge is making a scale model of the Willis Tower in Chicago for a theater set. The height of the tower is 1,353 feet. If the model is one one hundredth of the actual size of the building, how tall is the model? Well, let's kind of break it apart. We know that 1 times 1,353 equals 1,353 because the identity property of multiplication says any number multiplied by 1 is that number. So if we break it down even more, we know that 1 tenth times 1,353 equals. Well, we know that we have one place value to the right of the decimal, so in order to do that, we're going to have to move the decimal point one place to the left because we're taking one tenth. Now let's go to one hundredth times 1,353. Well, we have two place values to the right of the decimal, so we're going to have to add our answer is going to have to be two place values over. So we know our answer is going to be 13 and 53 hundredths. Now a quick easy way to remember that is to think of our decimal points in terms of fractions. So what fraction of the actual size of the building is the model? Well, we did one hundredths, so we know that the fraction of the actual size of the building is going to be one hundredth of the actual size. Now the th next thing it asks us to do is write the fraction of a decimal. 
So we're actually going to write it the way that it sounds. This is one hundredth. So our fraction written as a decimal is going to be one hundredth. So based upon this, Jorge's model of the Willis Tower is going to be, as we said, 13 and 53 hundredths feet tall. So as you multiply by decreasing power of tens, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? Well, to answer our question, we notice that the opposite applies. Whereas here, when you multiply the increasing power of tens, the decimal point moves one place to the right. Well, when you're multiplying by the decreasing power of tens, you notice the decimal point moves one place to the left as I multiply by the decreasing decimal place value. Now let's take a look at another example. Three friends are selling items at an arts and crafts fair. Josie makes $45.75 selling jewelry. Mark makes 100 times as much as Josie makes by selling his custom furniture. Chance makes a tenth of the money Mark makes by selling paintings. How much money does each friend make? So we know that Josie makes $45.75. Mark makes 100 times $45.75. So let's think about this. We know that 1 times 45.75 equals 45. Now let's think 10 times 45.75. Well, we know that there is one zero. So we are going to have to move our decimal place one place value to the right. If we move that one place value to the right, our decimal point is going to end up between the 7 and the 5. Therefore, 10 times 4575 is going to be $457 decimal point. And since we're talking about money, we need two place values to the right. So we're going to have to add a zero and 50 cents. Now let's take a look at the next one. It says 100 times 45.75. Well we have two zeros and a hundred so we're going to have to move our decimal place two places to the right. So now let's take a look at what chance makes. And if we look back up here, it says chance makes a tenth of the money Mark makes. So we know that to illustrate a tenth, we will use a decimal point. So chance makes one tenth, and it's going to be one tenth of what Mark makes, which is $4,575. So think, 1 times $4,575 is going to equal $4,575 according to our identity property of multiplication, which says that 1 times a number equals that number. So now, 1 tenth times $4,000 $575 requires us to move. We have one place value, but we can think of this tenth in terms of a fraction. So 0.1 or 1 tenth equals 1 tenth in regards to a fraction. So now we know that we have to move our place value 1 0 or 1 place value to the left because now we're dividing. So let's see if we go one place value over. That's going to put right there. So we know that chance makes $457.50.
because we can add a zero at the end to give us an even amount. So chance makes $457.50. Now we're going to do a little bit more practice and we're going to do these first two together and then you're going to do the last two on your own. So it says 10 to the power of zero times four and 78 hundredths. Well, we know that 10 times the power of zero is basically equal to one. So one times four and 78 hundredths is going to equal to four and 78 hundredths. Now we know 10 to the power of 1 times 4 and 78 hundredths. So we're going to have 1, 0. So we're going to have to move our answer one place value to the right. So 10 to the first power times 4 and 78 hundredths is now going to be 47 and 8 tenths. Now keep in mind the exponent basically tells you how many place values you're going to have to move your decimal point. For example, when we had zero, we didn't move our decimal point at all. When we had 10 to the first power, we moved our decimal place one place value. So think about 10 to the second power, how many place values you're going to have to move it. If you have not already done so, go ahead and complete the next two on your own. And then in part B, you're going to do the opposite. Think about one-tenth. Think about one-tenth in terms of a fraction. One-tenth is going to equal one-tenth. You have one zero and one-tenth, so you're going to move your decimal point one place to the left. Think about one hundredths in terms of a fraction. That is one hundredths. So you have two zeros and a hundredths, so you're going to move your decimal point two places to the left. Go ahead and complete those three on your own. Now you need to pull out your math journals so that we can do our math notes for tonight. And tonight our math notes are going to be on how to use the powers of 10 to multiply decimals mentally. We discussed one way of where we take 4 and 321 thousandths times 100, and since there are two zeros in 100, we are going to move our decimal point two places to the right. And another way that we looked at was using exponents. We took 4 and 321 thousandths times 10 to the power of 2. Well, we know that when we multiply 10 times 10, we're going to end up with two zeros. So the exponent kind of gives us a clue as to how many place values we need to move the decimal point to the right. If need be, go ahead and pause the video at this point so that you can get all the notes. And now I'm going to give you your password that you need to record in your planner and bring with you to class tomorrow to demonstrate completion of your homework. In chapter three, we learned that numbers in an ordered list are called a sequence. What is the number within the sequence called? And if you recall from chapter three, a number within a sequence is called a term. Be sure to record this word in your planner and bring it with you to class tomorrow.